restless hoping her harlequin hovers nearby awaiting a word gasping at glimpses of gentle true spirit he runs wishing he could fly by only to trip at the sound of goodbye wordlessly watching he waits by the window and wonders at the empty place inside heartlessly helping himself to her bad dreams he worries Did he hear a goodbye, I, or even hello? Let me get my disclosure out of the way. Lumix had nothing to do with this video. They're not seeing it. They're not paying for it. It's not technically sponsored, but they did give me this camera to play with, and I've only had a couple days to play with it, so don't expect the whole nine yards in this review. It's first impressions. But to be said... I do have an affinity for Lumix. They have been a fan of their cameras for a very long time, since the GH4, G7, GH5, G85. I like Lumix. I also have an S5 and an S5 II. I also really like Micro Four Thirds, so I have a bias towards Micro Four Thirds as well, which you're gonna get more into in this video because I think that's the biggest elephant in the room aside from me. But here it is, in all its Micro Four Thirds tiny ass sensor glory, the brand new Lumix GH7. If we were to play a fun little game, which was write down everything you want in a camera, the answer is the GH7. Internal ProRes RAW. Internal, we're not going to some stupid ninja over HDMI. Records internal ProRes RAW HQ to CF Express or to an SSD. Insane. Screw you, Red. Top tier Apex Ibis. 5.8K open gate recording. Basically every bit rate and frame rate you could probably think of off the top of your head with little to no crops at all. How about Cinema 4K 120p with no additional crop? Oh, and friends, it doesn't end there. We've also got 32 bit recording internally thanks to this new XLR adapter, which also has a pretty nice little shotgun mic mount. And of course, no overheating because this thing's got a massive fan. And check out this screen system. It not only flips out, it also flips up, and I can't figure out how to do it right now. There we go. Tilt, tilt and flip. Tilt and flip. Trademark that, Lumix. Tilt and flip. It sounds like a shitty roller coaster. <laughs> One of those parking lot carnivals. Don't go on those, you will die. So what's the catch? Well, I'll tell you what the catch is. It's Micro Four Thirds. I am so heavy into Super 35 and full frame land now that the only Micro Four Thirds lens I ever hung on to was this 12 to 35. A stellar lens, I shot that whole opening sequence with it. But full frame cameras have gotten so affordable, so much smaller, and so feature packed that it's hard to make the case for Micro Four Thirds. That is until you use this camera. And this is only gonna work for people that remember what it was like to shoot on the GH5, or maybe you're still shooting on a GH5. Nothing has really come close close to how great that camera was. Between the IBIS, the frame rates, the codecs, just using the camera in general. Personally, even the S5s and the S5Ts have never really replaced how great the GH5 was. GH6 was totally a skip because it didn't have phase detect. Oh my God, we didn't even talk about phase detect autofocus. Yeah, now we have phase detect autofocus in a GH series camera, let's go. That's so funny, like the, the flagship feature of this camera I completely forgot to talk about until like two minutes into the video. But yeah, if you had a GH5, like to this day, I probably could have still kept using the GH5 if it had autofocus, that camera is legendary. And now everything that's great about the GH5 is also better and it has phase detect autofocus. So what else do you need? But it's micro four thirds and I get it. I think a lot of people are not gonna grab this camera, especially as an A camera because it's micro four thirds. We're too deep in the ecosystem on full frame now to go back. A lot of us are going back. We all upgraded to the S5 and the S5 II or full frame cameras, FX3, all that stuff, or went Super 35 and Fuji World or an FX30, etc. But in the very short time I've been shooting with this, I'm not looking at this as a new A cam. I'm looking at this as the ultimate B cam, the perfect supplementary camera for all of my productions, especially documentary work. And that was really the theme of that footage that I shot. If I was shooting B-roll on any sort of documentaries, particularly something like true crime related, the GH7 is the camera I would use. I would use a full frame camera for my talking heads, my interviews and all that kind of stuff. But for all the B-roll, walking around with my subjects, all that kind of stuff, mounting it to a car, 
I would use the GH7. And when it comes to glass, of course, you can still speed boost, you can adapt, you can put every lens that pretty much exists on this sensor because it's so small and it has the coverage for it. So really, if you wanna go down this whole path of micro four thirds is dead, it doesn't make any sense. There is a lot of merits to the system that other cameras just aren't doing. Even though I've only had this thing for like three days, I will go on record as saying this is the best camera Lumix has ever made. It fixes all the issues I have with the S5 and S5 II, all the crops and all that crap that it has when you get into 60, the poor rolling shutter on those cameras too. This is a fairly fast rolling shutter. I didn't have any issues with it. The IBIS is the best I've ever used. Like I said, it has every codec, open gate 5.8K. My God. It truly does everything. The only thing it doesn't have is internal ND. So maybe that'll come in a GH8 and then that'll be the lifelong camera that most people could ever buy. What else do you possibly want from your camera? So I don't know what Lumix is gonna do for their full frame stuff coming up, but it's got big shoes to fill because it needs to do everything this thing does, but full frame for me to consider upgrading to a new full frame camera in the Lumix ecosystem because this, this is what I want. I want this in full frame. But even when they have that in full frame, I do think there's physics stuff with this system that makes sense. You're not gonna get IBIS out of full frame that is as good as this. You're not gonna get the lens coverage options that you're gonna have with micro four thirds and the flexibility that comes with speed boosting and adapting whatever you want. But you guys know I don't really care about cameras anymore so it takes a lot for me to get excited about something. I'm excited about the GH7 and I think you should be too. I'm gonna shoot some projects with the GH7 coming up so let me know if you have any questions about it or there's anything you wanna see. But otherwise, I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you real soon. It's a good time to buy a camera. What a fucking shit outro. What did, I was doing so good. I was doing so good and then I just botched, botched the outro. You got anything to say, Beef? No? See you soon.